want to thank everybody uh, for attending our uh, marketing class, uh, How to be, uh, Become the Worst Kept Secret. <laughs> Great title. Uh, and I want to welcome our instructor, our presenter, for the president of the Ontario District. And re his reputation uh, precedes him as being an excellent uh, presenter. Although by his own admission, he's never done a strictly marketing class. So this will be an opportunity for us to see his, his uh, premier work, his debut class. So everybody say hi to Michael Black and uh, Michael, it's all yours. Thank you, David. Thanks for uh, the opportunity here. I see a lot of familiar faces in the, uh, in the Zoom room, which is great to see. Um, yeah, I didn't have more than I would expect, actually, including uh, I see Christian Hunter here. He's the king of marketing. I'm just going to hand the reins over to him. He can probably present this way better than I can at this point. I'm not nearly as much fun. You're more fun. <laughs> That's you, have better jokes. you have better jokes, too. We had Christian earlier for membership, and, and already I can tell this is going to be much more fun. <laughs> well, you guys are lucky. He's uh, he's an excellent uh, presenter in his own right. He, he knows an awful lot about an awful lot of things. So welcome to uh, Becoming the Worst Kept Secret. This is effective promotion and communication for your chorus and, uh, and quartet. And you can see I've got a couple of really good thank yous down there because I was not alone in drafting this course and the content of it. Before we get started, a couple of Zoom reminders, and I'm sure everyone's been on uh, lots of Zooms, not just this past weekend, but, you know, the past two years. But just in case, uh, it's great to see a lot, most people using the video option, so thank you for doing that. Uh, stay on mute if you're not talking, and just be mindful of background noise as well. And if you've got, I mentioned putting your hand up earlier. So if you've got questions or comments, um, I, I'm hoping this is going to be a very interactive session, so um, please please pop your hand up either. It's probably easier to do it using the little uh, button at the bottom. If I see anyone on my screen, um, I'll, uh, I'll call you out, but I think I can only see 12 at a time. And we've, we've, uh, we've got a lot more than that tonight. So I'm very excited to get started here. Um, David uh, briefly introduced me, but um, there's one omission there i'm actually or one error i'm actually the immediate past president as of nine days ago of the ontario oh. district um but when i sent over the bio it was it was correct but uh anyway just credit where credit's due we have a, a fantastic team uh leading the district now and well, I'm, that's uh, gonna that's gonna affect your compensation so uh... <laughs> Um, besides that, uh, I'm also the former VP, I had to give it up when I uh, took on the president role, but former VP marketing and PR for the Ontario district that I, I did that for five years uh, before stepping into the presidency role. And uh, much earlier in my barbershop career, I was the, the VP marketing and PR for the Capital City Chorus up in Ottawa. So I uh, have done this a little bit. I've uh, been, I mostly consider myself kind of a webmaster. Uh, so I've done that for the Ontario District and for Sing Canada Harmony and Toronto Northern Lights and, and a couple of other organizations there too. Um, you can see if you, I'll, I'll include my email at the end, but if you've got any questions or you want anything from this, um, we'll be sharing the slides, as David said, and, and the guide that comes out of this as well um, at the end of all this uh, hoopla. I've got, I've got a dirty little secret to share. Uh, with you today. And that's that the VP marketing and PR for a district is very, very different than the VP marketing for a chapter. We don't have to worry about like getting members in the door. Those members are already in the door. They're in our chapters. So mostly we're trying to get you out to conventions. We're trying to get you out to the leisure academies and stuff like that. So I don't have a whole lot of chapter uh, marketing experience. What I do have is a lot of years of chatting with our marketing uh, teams for our chapters around, uh, chatting with marketing teams for uh, chapters I've been a part of or chapters whose shows I've been on or you know just uh, other events. So most of the stuff I'm doing here is just blatantly stolen uh, from other chapters who are doing really, really good stuff. So, and I'm hoping that I, I get to steal some stuff from you as well today. So please, as I mentioned, this should be interactive and, and I'd love to hear uh, what your experience is with all the little things that we're going through and the, the ideas that pop up with this. We don't have a ton of time, so it, if you read the, the description that I included of this course, uh, it's going to be kind of a, a you know, whistle-stop tour of just kind of some ideas and, and things to pick up. 
Um, and most of them, what we're going to use as a, as a discussion starter for this is this guide that was put out a couple of years ago. So it's, it was put out, uh, revised and updated in June 2017. Uh, it's the Chapter Marketing Toolbox, and it's part of the Healthy Chapter Initiative that the BHS uh, put together. Now, this predates the, uh, the new um, strategic vision of Everyone in Harmony. So uh, when we send out this box, I'm not 100% uh, this toolbox, I'm not 100% sure that the language is as inclusive as you, you might expect now. Um, but uh, it's it's a fantastic resource, and so this is what we're going to use as a uh, as a springboard today. It's developed by marketing experts from around the society and not just BHS staff. This is comes from chapters like yours, and uh, and that's I think a really important thing. It's easy for someone to swoop in and pretend like they have all the answers, uh, but that might not work for your chapter size, your community size, uh, the the level of volunteership in your chapter, right? So there's there's got to be something. There's no silver bullet for this stuff, um, and there's lots of kind of ideas that could work for where you're coming from. So let's let's dive in. Uh, the end of today, we're going to go through these discussion starters, and they come from the guide. Um, the guide actually spells them out a bit more, so you're going to really enjoy reading through that document uh, after all this is done. But I'm hoping we can just. I'll, I'll mention them. I'll kind of talk about the idea. And then if you've got any experience with it, if you have anything that's kind of adjacent to it, um, pipe up. I, I'd love to hear you. And if I, if people aren't talking, I'm going to start calling you out. I'm going to point you and, uh, and get you to say something about how it relates to your chapter. So please do add and share uh, to this discussion. We're going to go through marketing ideas, public relations ideas, gig ideas. So where you can perform in your community, membership drives and initiatives, and we'll talk about um, internal public relations. So um, how, if you are the marketing uh, guru for your chapter, a lot of your job is, is turning inward and hyping up your members about what you're doing, right? So that's the internal public relations. And then I'll talk about some other things that are in the guide too, and just as a, a teaser, so that you can go chase those down yourself if they sound of interest. So let's start with marketing your chapter. Um, signage. One of the things that the, the guide will talk about is, is signage. So I don't know if you, I only have seen one chapter do this in our district, but if you're putting together a chapter, if, you, if you're there every week, you're, one of your best bets is people who are already in the area, people who are walking by. So if, if you're in like a church basement and you don't have uh, one of those A-frame signs or something sitting out front, now how are people even going to know that they could go in and be a guest, right? So that's, that's a huge one. I think it's something we overlook, right? No, no business would operate without a sign out front. So why are we putting together a chapter night, having good music being sung, and then not having anything outside indicating what the heck is going on in here, right? Maybe I'll work through all these and then we can just uh, circle back um, if folks have any thoughts on any of them, ones we've talked about or uh, whether they've worked, whether they haven't, and then, um, and then we can move through like that. So websites and social media, that's, that's an obvious one. Um, that's a big one. Paid advertising, this is where you'd use either Facebook or Google or Twitter or something like that. And you'd, uh, you'd pay for ads to appear. And you can get pretty granular with those too, right? You can say, I'm interested in people who, um, maybe you're doing a Rat Pack show. You could say, I'm interested in, in people on Facebook who um, like Frank Sinatra, who, who like the music of, of uh, you know, Sammy Davis Jr. or something. And, and it actually finds those people in your area and can get really granular about finding them and saying, okay, this is actually someone who, would be really relevant to this show. Um, it's, I, you know, you could do all these, maybe they're not all super relevant in your community, or maybe you don't have the, the person power to be able to do them all well. Um, and if you're, if you're not doing them well, if you're not able to constantly create content, we could talk about what that looks like too. Um, it might not be the most uh, effective use of your time, but there's a lot worse ways to get really ingrained in your community than to use social media like them. I want to point out YouTube, especially. I think some, some chapters are uh, still kind of wary about posting uh, 
um, things to YouTube, posting videos to YouTube because of the copyright issues and all. I don't want to get in trouble and things like that. Um, I'll tell you up up here in Ontario, and and it's not a it's not a Canadian law versus American law thing. This is we've had super good luck with just posting everything to YouTube. This goes for everything from our conventions, all performances, um, and and quartets and chapters love having these great videos that they can then share around. Now, every, maybe on three of the videos, three of the 20, 30 videos we upload uh, uh, contest season, we'll get a little alert from YouTube saying, hey, uh, there's copyright material in this. So just as a heads up, we are gonna put ads on it and, um, and you won't get the money for those ads. Like someone else is gonna monetize it because they own the content and you don't have to do anything. This is not a knock against your account. This is not anything. This is just how it's gonna work. And you still get those videos up there. You get to keep them up there and you don't have to worry about the, the copyright issues like that. So that's been, uh, that's my experience. And, and based on what you know the BHS is doing and a lot of other groups, as long as you're not monetizing your YouTube channel, you can uh, really, really have good luck with that. Google Places. So this it shows up when you um, you Google a, an entity, a store or something on uh, on Google. And it's one of those kind of almost automated boxes that pop up on the side. It's not one of the regular links that are called out, but it's the box on the side and says, okay, this is uh, a location that we're aware of. This is an address and this is who's associated with it. Um, and that's that's a, a really good opportunity. If you, if you can get access to the location where you rehearse and say, hey, this is our Google Place, even if it's not 100% your, it's not exclusively used by your group, if it's a church or whatever, even if you can take that address and say, hey, we're the, we're the Winchester Cornfin and we belong here, this is where we rehearse, uh, that gets called out and, and it's a really good chance to kind of get more traction and get uh, more alerts for people who Google your name or kind of Google that address or, or what's in this area, right? You appear on maps and and it's not something that folks always think of. You know, you think of a website, but you don't think of this extra piece of, of latching onto Google Places. Business cards, uh, phone and email, those are pretty standard. I think just having these accessible for your members to hand out and, and a phone number that you can use and, and email that gets checked and things like that. And then Meetup, this is a, a service that where you can sign up for it and uh, encourage people, to, people who want to go out and do things in the world can sign up for these groups and you say, okay, we meet this week. It's kind of, a, it's not new, it's like, within the last 10 years or so, but it's it's people coming back around to that, oh, I wanna gather in person idea, uh, something we've been doing for 80 years, 80 plus years. And it's we're, we're almost like ahead of the curve now, which is kind of fun. So it's not always uh, super viable in the middle of a pandemic, but you know, it's, it's, it is a fun thing to uh, take advantage of. So I'm gonna stop talking now. I wanna, what, what kind of success have you had? We're talking about marketing, um, either with some of these or something kind of related to one of these, what do you guys, uh, what are you feeling? What, what have you experienced? I see Dan. We had some good experience recently just by putting a, a few signs out that we made at Staples that just said singers wanted and the email. Just people and, walking and that's, out, that's out front of, of where you meet, or is that like somewhere else in the community? Community. It's like in the medians where stoplights are. Cool. Uh, so cool. people walk that's wherever people are walking by or stopped for a little bit because it takes time to like write down that email. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We got like five yeah. members via that. Singers wanted or uh, or learn to sing, depending on you know what you're looking for. Both of those are really really good. And I mentioned Christian Hunter before, but he's got like he could talk about this for days. But um, yeah, he's had real success with both of those kind of initiatives in in getting lots of traction in the community, getting lots of people out. With just thinking about it that way, you're not asking people, hey, come out on Thursday for the rest of your life. You're saying singers want it, you know, and you can kind of set the expectation from there. Great point. Thanks, Dan. Uh, other comments, other thoughts?
Well, you talk at all about how you know where you get your uh, respondees from, because the tracking which ads are most useful has been a challenge for us. Right, right. Um, yeah, so when we just held our Christmas show, um, it, it depends what you're trying to do. If you're, tr if you're saying uh, we want to know how members came out, you can ask them right when they come in the door. If you're asking how people learned about you when they're hiring you, or if you're asking how folks came get um, ended up buying tickets, there's different ways you could do that. But we had a lot of success. Uh, I think it was the Toronto Northern Lights, and on as part of our checkout system, um, when people were buying tickets, we just straight up asked them, did, "How did you hear about us? Did you?" And we gave like six different options or other. Um, but sometimes it go, comes down to that. You know, there are automated automated ways to, to do this stuff. There's like uh, Google Analytics where you can start to track your traffic and say, oh, I see most people are coming from this community or um, this is, you know, who's visiting our website. But a lot of the time, you, you mostly just have to ask them. Any thoughts on that? Did, did that um, is that a satisfying response, Arthur? Well, it's helpful. There's a lot of things we want to ask them, not only where they heard about us, right? Sure. But also there's issues about diversity and do you want to sing and are you an audience member or a performer and sure. so on. But it, asking them is certainly a appropriate response, but that's a good tip. And hey, Michael, I'll, I'll jump in here. Sorry, I'm, this is Tracy and Christian and we're just yeah, finishing. Sure. Um, one of the things that I've, I've had trouble with is I started with that thought of I want to know which Facebook ad or which thing brought someone in the door and then I got to thinking of how does a Coca-Cola or somebody like that deal with marketing and really it's about impressions they call it so how many times are these people seeing your chorus's name your etc maybe they saw a news blurb of how you sang at the Memorial Day ceremony then they saw you something on Facebook grab down their feed and then they stopped they were stuck in traffic on you know route 46 or whatever and they saw your sign so it's it's kind of hard to pinpoint which impression actually kind of broke broke their back and, and made them finally come um but what i would just suggest is do it all like all these things you're seeing here to the extent that you've got the ability to do things do it all because the more impressions you make the greater chance you'll have someone coming in the door Thank you, Christian. Um, I see a, a question in the chat from uh, Renee, uh, just wanting a little bit more about that Google Places. So I've pulled up here the Hamilton Harbor Town Sound. This is a, a chapter in our district. Um, so you can see the websites over here, uh, but also here they have this, they have it associated with a map. So they have a place and they've gone to Google and said, hey, this is the location that we this is an address that we're associated with. It's a little, it can be a little bit of a pain. Um, in the past where I've done this for companies, uh, Google will send you a postcard with a number on it. And then you have to take that number and enter it in so that they know you're actually associated with that physical location. Um, but if you can work with the location where you're, you're meeting, uh, it, it's just, it brings this extra piece up where you can actually add photos about what you are. Um, and it associates the address. And it's just this whole extra section that um, makes you a, a stand out a bit more. Other thoughts, other questions? This is good discussion, so thank you. Okay, excuse me, on the Google Place, it's uh, Gerald in Nova Scotia. Uh, so this pops up when your website is showing, and but your, your name is not associated with the place whatsoever because we don't own it, right? Is that what That's you're right. saying? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so it, it pops up on the Google result. It doesn't pop up on your website, um, no. but it pops up when someone Googles Googles the name of your group. Okay, I got you. So this uh, Har yeah, Harbor or, Town sound, oh, it's there. Oh, yeah, okay. It's there. Yeah, or cool. even sometimes depending on like how, how, um, how well known you are by Google, basically, um, even if someone Googles like Hamilton Barbershop, um, it, it'll still pull up the same the same box, right? Yeah. Uh, Dan, did I see a hand up? I was I was wondering if anyone here had had used Facebook, to and which keywords were successful for bringing in uh, new singers, and how much money? Like before, I spend money. I want to know did it work, for people, and how did they tune their that instrument. 
I go, am I allowed to talk again? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do Take too much. I've had tremendous success on Facebook um, and largely, and I've never paid a penny. What I do is I infiltrate various Facebook groups. <clears throat> so if you are an aficionado of Facebook, you know that your feed is probably filled half with people you know and half with, with groups that you've joined. So what I've done is I just look for groups in my area. So here it's Raritan United, hundred things to do in Hunterdon County, uh, former Allstate choir singers. So I get, I become a member of those groups. So then when I post something up on Facebook about an event or something we have going on, I then share that to the group. And I take me about 15, 20 minutes and I just share to every single group. I'm probably in 40 or 50 of them. And at the end of the day, it's getting into the feed of 10, 15,000 people every single time. Uh, and I'm getting all kinds of likes and comments and shares and things like that. Women it's whatever. Yeah, my wife is telling me women of hundred and county. That is probably right. That's women been of one of our number one things here. So that's that's been tremendously helpful. The content, you know, what I try to do is I try to do a varied mix of it. Sometimes it'll be young people, it'll be older people, it'll be sing people singing in a choir, people singing karaoke, um, depending on what I'm posting up. So uh, the branding, I think, is big. You know, messaging that matches the, the feel for our chorus. Ours is a very like caring, compassionate teaching kind of chorus. So I try to bring that out uh, in the messaging that we use. Thanks, for, uh, Christian. Uh, Terry from Schenectady. Yeah, oh, the hand worked. I, just a quick question. Is that a new policy on YouTube about not pulling copyrighted material down? but basically leaving it there and putting targeted uh, advertisement on it. Is that new? It's not, um, it's, an, it's an option they've had for quite a while. Um, the copyright holder still has the ability, still has the, the, you know, the, yeah, the ability to go in and say, actually, I don't want this up at all. They can still say, take it down. But for the most part, you know, there's no downside for them. Um, to having up there and there's there's an upside where they can make some money so uh, while well, it does come down to the the copyright holder um, in my experience especially for the type of music that we sing um, we've never seen we've never had an issue where they actually have pulled it down all right let's keep going um, public relations for your chapter so uh, this is a good opportunity to talk about kind of getting involved in your community. And one of the great ways is to do that is with arts councils and other music organizations that you can kind of get associated with. Make sure that you're, you're, um, you know the other choirs in your community, um, you know what their challenges are, you know how you can meet their needs. And it's not, not, in, a, not in a poaching singer's way, but uh, in a we know what you need and we, we've been there and how can we help each other? Um, arts councils are really great because they might have resources available or, or ways of um, doing more direct advertising or mailing lists or things like that. And if you can get associated with them, it's a great way to not have to put together your own mailing list or, or e-blast or something like that um, and really just hop on with one that you know is already being distributed to a lot of super relevant, super interested folks in your community. Show advertising, and we could talk about uh, traditional, it talks about traditional marketing. So those are, you know, the standard posters and things like that. You could do donation campaigns as part of, um, as part of the, the shows that you're doing. So that's a good way to um, have kind of a, a goodwill story with, uh, if you do kind of a pass the hat type of thing, or a percentage of uh, this show's proceeds are going to go to this charity, or uh, we, we've done a couple things, even with our Christmas show, um, just this past year, we did 10% uh, uh, off plus 10% of the ticket price will go to this charity. So we had customized um, discount codes that went to a couple different charities that we partnered with. And that uh, to, I forget who it was, to Arthur's point, that's a great way to um, figure out where people are coming from. Did it come from this group, the, the Shriners or the Animal Hospital or whatever? Um, and secondly, it's it's another feel-good story where people are like, ah, I don't know, I was kind of on the fence about going to the show, but 
it's also donating to one of my favorite uh, causes. So yeah, I'm going to make it happen. Uh, webcast, and that's especially relevant, um, you know, in the last two years, but you can absolutely webcast your show and, uh, and there, there is a little bit of finagling you have to do with some of the licenses and stuff with that, but it's another great way to um, earn some money and earn some viewers and uh, just spread it wider than you might be able to traditionally. Press kit. So this is something I really encourage you to uh, put together. It's just kind of a who we are about us. And it should include a couple of really great videos, a couple of really great photos, um, and just a, an about so that if someone ends up on your website and they want um, from, from a news organization, and they want to get a sense of kind of who am I talking about here? Who should I talk to? It can include like a contact number. Um, but it's something that they can use if they're already putting together a story about your group. Um, and that way you're not hunting it down. Hey, you guys have a good photo? I don't know. Let me check with Bob. I think he, he's got a photo uh, from district a couple of years ago, right? If it's all kind of in one contained package, you can just send it off. Um, we've had really good luck with that, with uh, the quartet that I sing with. Um, the other thing about that is just like having a, a super good photo and super good videos is key to this. And I would encourage you to get a photo, you know, those ones that you'll get at the district convention where you're all kind of dressed up nice and everyone looks good. But you also want to have a couple of really great high quality, high resolution photos of just having fun on a chapter night. So not the whole chorus, not like a pose thing, but just kind of a, a sideways shot of the front row singing or uh, guys laughing in between the song or, or sorry, uh, singers laughing in between the song. Um, that That is like butter. That is exactly what folks want to see. They want to see people having fun. And, uh, and sometimes that polish from uh, the, the tuxedos and the dresses just doesn't, isn't the flavor that they want to put on it. So um, make sure you've got some really high quality photos in that press kit. Uh, mailing list, and there's obviously a couple different ways you could do that. You could do a snail mail. The, the chorus I used to sing with in Ottawa, um, there was one guy who just ran the entire snail mail campaign. He sent out like 100 postcards every Christmas and like a hundred of them came back, everyone wanted tickets. And he had been doing this for you know 30 years. So of course he knew. So snail mail could still work really well, especially if you have a, a very dedicated volunteer to take that on and uh, a good base list. Um, but I think the more standard these days is an email. So if you could put together an email list um, uh, with the chorus I sing with, we, uh, we have what we call the inner circle. So folks would sign up for that and then um, we send out, you know, they get heads up on shows that we're doing or, you know, discount codes and things like that. And it's, uh, it's just a, a nice way to know that you have a dedicated group that are going to be interested in what you have to say. So that's public relations. Uh, thoughts on this? Any, anyone had any good luck with any of these or questions about these? Yeah, you mentioned uh, discount codes a couple of times uh, this last session there. Uh, I gather that's something you could put in uh, to the website or ticket purchase or whatever that uh, it's kind of automatic, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty standard. Um, uh, if you're using Harmony site uh, to, to, for your website, uh, they support them. Eventbrite uh, takes care of codes and, and you can absolutely pop in, uh, make it easy to sign up for events of all sorts. So it, I would say it's pretty standard. Thanks, Gerald. Any other questions, thoughts? Question, question, Patsy. Um, does the Eventbrite cost to use? Uh, it does, yeah, the BHS has uh, a really good partnership with them. And so they have, uh, I think you're paying for like the, the pro price, but you're getting like significantly more uh, details. Uh, I see Christian has posted that he, uh, oh no, that's super easy for codes. I can find more information, Patsy, if you'd like um, about their, their partnership that they have with Eventbrite, but we use it as a district and we have absolutely loved it. Let me just make a note of that. And uh, while I'm doing that, David. Uh, just for <clears throat> uh, something to keep in mind, 
of the Eventbrite uh, sessions that we set up for this Online Leadership Academy does not cost us anything because we don't charge. So if you have a free event, it's no charge. Good point. Yep. Other comments, other questions, other ideas? Greg. Uh, yeah, I was just uh, about the press kits. Is that something that you would put together and actually send right out to the, uh, like the radio stations, TV stations? Or would it be upon request or something that if they would it be something on the website that would be say available and then for upon request or is it just something you put together and sent out good question we usually use it um on request um unless you have and one of the things they get into is kind of do, putting together a press release so if you have a good news story oh uh, one of our members just turned 100 years old or, you know, just uh, got his 70 year pin or something like that. Um, if you've got a good news story, or even like we have a show coming up, um, and you send that out, that's something where you just kind of tack it on and say, hey, if you want more details on this, uh, on who we are, here's our press kit. I wouldn't say unprompted, you would send it just as like, a, hey, in case you were interested in, in groups in your community. I don't think it's, it's like a, that situation. Um, but it's either a situation where you're already sending out, hey, we've got some cool info that your listeners, your readers might be interested in, or it's something where they come to you and say, hey, I heard about this. Can you tell me a bit more about your organization? Okay, thanks. Good question. Thanks, Greg. Anyone else? Yeah, somebody asked Dave in the, uh, in the chat about uh, the event, uh, I'm sorry, the, the ticket place. Does that count for free donations, gratefully accepted? And my question was, um, if you are selling tickets, what, are, what does it cost? Okay, let me explain uh, part of your registration. When you signed up, you signed, there were 11 classes and there was an opportunity to, opportunity to make a donation. And a number of people have made a donation uh, to this cause, but that's not, we're not charging you for the ticket sale. I think so, they meant at the door, David. If you're, I'm if sorry? You're doing a, if you're doing, I, I think they meant at the door, at the, at the, you know, at the actual gig. If you're not selling tickets, it's free, but you're accepting donations from the people that came to your show. Does, is Eventbrite right. still I, free? I thought you were talking about Eventbrite. Well, I'm right. guessing the person that read it, because I had a question too about Eventbrite. That was my question about uh, Eventbrite. If you if you want if you have a free program like we did for our holiday concert, but we welcome donations, will Eventbrite still advertise it for free? Well, that yes, because I believe they advertise for no. free unless you're there, unless you're doing ticket sales through their site. That's I may be correct. wrong. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, and then my question was, what does it cost if you're selling tickets through their site? I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, so, sorry, I was I just don't chasing know that down. I was just chasing that down. Um, and it's, uh, I pasted in the chat, but there's like the, the landing page that the BHS has for Eventbrite, but there's also the link to the, the ticket revenue and fee comparison. So um, effectively, you're getting the pr premium package, um, but it, it breaks down to like, uh, where is that? There's a flat fee and a percentage fee. Keep in mind there. So there's two two kind of categories of fees or costs you're looking at with Eventbrite. One is how much the ticketing fees, processing fees. Our chorus has decided to pass those on to the ticket buyer. So kind of like if you go to a concert hall or buy tickets for the movies, it's not ten dollars anymore. It's eleven seventy five or whatever because of all the BS fees that they keep putting in there. Now we're doing the same thing. Thank you, humanity. The second part is the actual like credit card processing fees and things like that, that we do eat. Um, but what we've found is we did look around at brown paper tickets or whatever it is like, there's a whole bunch of other places out there to do it. For us, Eventbrite was, was the cheapest, most efficient option using the BHS thing. The other thing that was beautiful is <clears throat> if you create a marketing ecosystem of where you do everything. So I use Canva, for example for creating a lot of my digital materials. 
I can go right from there into Facebook and into Eventbrite. Like these are all kind of connected together and it makes it so easy to just like click and go one thing, one thing to another. So I'll go from Canva into Eventbrite, set up my concert in Eventbrite and then go right from Eventbrite to Facebook, for example. And then I take that link and put it on our website. It's, it's become so much easier than past years. Just a little plug. Um, Terry, to answer your question, the, the premium rate is the credit card fee is 3%, and that's pretty standard, uh, no matter who you're processing with. Um, then Eventbrite takes a 1.5% fee plus 99 cents with the BHS premium rate. Good questions. I love that we're getting into the, the nitty gritty here. Yeah, let's, let's dive deep into the details. I think Steve there... Solomon has something he wants to add. Yeah, Steve, uh, jump in. Yeah, hi, everybody. I just, um, and then the one thing about just the, I, because I saw it in chat, just to clarify about donations. So what you do is you set up your entire ticket structure. And one of the tickets is a donation. So when someone wants to make a donation, even though everything else was free, like for this event, you, you can go down and you see that donation line. And if you want to put in whatever amount you want for a donation, but there is a fee on that. So the minute that becomes monetized, you're still going to get the fee structure through Eventbrite. So I just wanted to make that clear. Yeah, like another way to do it like that would just be to, when you're sending the confirmation email to them, include a button on it that says, hey, we're accepting donations as part of this, right? And and that would, yep. th those ones you could process however you want to, if you want to send them to PayPal or or To whatever. your website, right? To yeah, your own ex website. Exactly, yep. exactly. Good. Good point. All right. Let's keep going. Gigs for your chapter. Uh, singing Valentine's, that's pretty standard. This one, I'm just going to open it all up. Um, there's lots of ideas in here and, and ways that you can, um, really creative ways that you can get more gigs. So partnering with hotel association, partnering with meeting planners and service clubs in your area. And hey, have you thought about getting on, have you approached the cable TV station in your area or the Chamber of Commerce to sing the national anthem at the start of their, you know, whatever event that they do every year. So there's, there's tons of cool ideas. I mean, I, uh, I, I went out, I saw a poster for a show and I went out and, and uh, saw the first, the Guelph chapter before I joined, but what got me out was like getting invited when I saw them at a uh, local fair. So like, these performances, the more performances you can do in your area, it's better for ticket sales, it's better for getting more gigs, and it's better for, better for getting more members in your chapter. So. Um, anyone have super good luck with some of the more unconventional ones here or anything like that? Um, I do. I'm Geraldine from the Bridgeport chapter. And um, I have a local historical society that I, I tend to their website and so on. And um, they are willing to accept us to come in and do a program and also a little bit of entertainment at the same time and still get paid. Cool. And, and the best part is most of the people that are sitting in those seats are like 60s, 70s, 80s. And these people just love to sing. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, groups like that. If you can partner with someone, it's uh, it makes it that much easier. Plus, you're you're ingraining yourself. People think of you as like a real part of of the community. Okay, I know my goal here is to get done by eight, and then we kind of kind of have fifteen minutes to to just chat. We'll open it wide open, so we'll we'll see how how we get for that. But uh, we're going to move on to membership drives and initiatives. So before I do this, we're going to get a little bit interactive and I'm, I'm probably going to take this out of the slide deck before uh, I send it out because I, I stole this with permission from Paul Ellinger, but it was a couple of years ago. So uh, I, I don't know if I still have permission, but I'm, I'm calling it out. I'm telling him that I've done this. So um, I, if you've done this before, it's a really fantastic ex exercise, but everyone in the room, let's put up our hands. And you could, if you're on video, just put it up like that. We don't have to do digital. Okay. You may put your hand down if you began your journey into barbershop because someone personally invited you to attend a chapter meeting, rehearsal, or show. Uh, 
Okay. On my screen, it's pretty much bang on 70% hands down. Now, he, he points out if we're at a leadership academy or similar, the number may be lower than 70% because, you know, we're, we're like go-getters, right? But I'm seeing pretty much 70% of hands were down. So that's, that's pretty much bang on. Okay, second one. Keep your hands up if you still have your hands up. If you had your hand down, put, uh, keep it down. So, does that make sense? Don't put your hand back up. Okay. Uh, now, secondly, of those with this hand still up, you may put your hand down if you began your journey into barbershop because you heard the music and said, I have to be a part of that and pursued that interest by asking someone, getting online, responding to an ad, et cetera. So if that describes you, put your hand down. I see one, how many people with their hands still up? I see three, four. I think I see four people with their hands still up. How many people do we have on the call? Um, 45. 45. So is that, that's like 90%. That's like 92%. That's pretty close. Now, we'll take that. I just want to, you know, dig into these four people who still have their hand up. If you grew up in barbershop with family members, that would clearly put you either in being personally invited or having heard the music. So if this is you, you could put your hand down. Does that count as anyone? <laughs> I think I got Eileen. Uh, there's a couple of people still with a hand up and then, yeah, that's not everyone, but you know, he goes on to say, most people don't see an ad to join a chorus and then just go out to the chorus. So, um, oh no, there's, there's this extra piece here. Rather, if you, if you heard the music and enjoyed it and later you saw the ad and it provided with you, you with an opportunity to pursue your interest, which was sparked either by a personal invitation or by having heard the music. If this describes you, you may put your hand down, putting you in one of the first two categories. Is that anyone? Just, just because I'm super interested. Uh, is it Jillian? Is your hand still up? Okay, Jillian and Renee and Terry. Anyone else? And Dan. Okay, really quickly, I want to hear from each of you how you how you joined barbershop. I was looking for a chorus, so I found a chorus online and it ended up being a barbershop chorus. Cool. I didn't know anything about barbershop music. Cool. Yeah. Well, we're glad we, we're glad we got you. Yeah. Uh, Terry. <laughs> I didn't quite fit the question. You said, you know, you heard the music and you wanted to join. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw a performance and heard the music, but that's not why I joined. I joined because the person that was directing the chorus on the stage was actually a colleague of mine at work. Oh, did he did he ask you to come out? No, he never told me that he sung Barbershop. But the fact that he was there allowed me to join a group because I'm a very shy person. And hmm. at that time, I was only singing in my church. Cool. So it was, only, it was, a, only it was for a, one year. So it, it, I was, yeah, I was new to singing. It wasn't a, an invitation, but it was a familiar presence. That's, yeah, that's yeah. cool. Uh, Jillian. I moved here and as soon the first thing I wanted knew I wanted to do was join a chorus and sing. And so I looked up in our, our local performance newsletter and uh, there was some information about, uh, about our chorus. And I thought I'd never had an opportunity to sing Barbershop before. I was really intrigued. And um, six years later, I'm still here and loving it. Cool, that is so fun. And Dan? Well, I, I, I sort of have a unique story here. Uh, many moons ago in college, I sang a few barbershop pieces with the chorus that I was involved in. Uh, wait, wait, wait. How did you join? How did you find out about that chorus? Oh, well, I was in college. I mean, uh, and I'd always sung in choruses, uh, even in high school. So, you know, choral singing wasn't new to me. Right, uh, right but I haven't sung in one in quite some time. And now uh, fast forward many years, my wife heard about a barbershop or, you know, a barbershop group in the uh, greater Burlington area. And she uh, had a business connection with somebody who was part of it. 
And so she talked me into going down for the night to, uh, to see what they were doing. And I came down for the night to see what they were doing and uh, haven't left. Cool. Yeah. Well, that, is it, isn't that, isn't that a personal invitation to get out of the house? <laughs> <laughs> it may well have been. <laughs> I, I had one of those tonight <laughs> for this. Yeah. Can I ask you, John, uh, Dan, rather, uh, uh, how long ago was that? You're muted. You're, you're muted, Dan. We didn't hear you, Dan. You were muted. I think that was about six, uh, five or six years ago when I uh, came down and ended up joining the Green Mountain Chorus. <laughs> Great. All right. <laughs> Cool. Okay, so the, the whole point of that whole exercise was just uh, there's two ways. The effective ways that people join, uh, begin their journey in the barbershop is if someone personally invites them and if someone allows them to hear the music. And number three is that's it. There's only two. So those are the keys to growth. Like if you talk to Paul Ellinger, he's, he, he's adamant about this. Those are the two keys to growth. One is personally inviting people, part of a grassroots organization. Um, your, your, whatever advertising you do is never going to be as effective as someone saying, hey, you should come out on a Tuesday night. And number two is allowing them to hear the music. And ideally that's live and recorded is a decent backup. But that goes to kind of having really good uh, YouTube uh, videos or just videos in your press kit. And then he, if you, he's got a whole course on this, but basically he's like, well, we should do both at the same time. If we can, if we can get personally invite people when right after they hear the music, then we have super good success rate. So take, take this to be what you will. Um, but suffice to say, oh yeah, then mind blown. This is the end. Um, suffice to say, uh, those are the best ways. Those are really the, the two effective ways uh, to, to use marketing for a membership drive. But uh, there's a couple of ways we can lean into that. And we've talked about a couple of them already tonight. So one is the Learn Sing program or Singers Wanted. Dan, we, you were ahead of the game, but, but, uh, but this is it here. So Singers Wanted, Learn to Sing. And, um, and the third one that is mentioned here is just greeting your guests. So you know, we did this exercise here. Hey, how did you join Barbershop? How did you hear about Barbershop? How did you end up going out on the first night? Well, are you, are you doing that same thing with every guest that comes in the door? Because that wouldn't that be interesting to hear from them and say, oh, I saw the sign out front and I decided to come down. Or, oh, I heard you on YouTube and, uh, you know, I, then I realized you were just down the street or something like that, right? So just making sure that, um, that you are doing the due diligence to figure out, you know, exactly what is bringing people in your community into your door and into your into your course and onto your risers. So, um, any any other points that we've haven't touched on with the learn to sing or the singers wanted or anything like that? Yes, Jillian. Can I just add something? Um, so I uh, I actually reached out to a number of courses when I was trying to decide where I'd go, and the person from Barbershop was so friendly and so welcoming. Previously, <clears throat> I had been, the first comment was, well, you know, we're an auditioned chorus. I thought, well, that's a little presumptuous of yeah. you, but anyway, um, but she was so welcoming. I just thought I really wanna be part of an organization that she's representing. So I think that that counts for a lot. Um, it, the, it, the friendly people who, uh, who reach out to, to guests means Absolutely. a lot. Absolutely. Yeah, having the right people do that too. That's not everyone's cup of tea, right? And so making sure the people that are public facing uh, voice of your chorus are the people that you want there. And they're the people that are going to be inviting and, and encouraging. So other comments? David, was that a hand up or no? That was just a scratch in the ear. Okay. Um, I, I wondered, Michael. Yep. If anyone had had success with doing rehearsals out in public. Steve? Um, so, you know, during this pandemic, we, I instituted very early on um, 
frankly, before anyone else doing garage things uh, under in a parking garage. And um, although a kind of a horrible location, because uh, there is traffic and it's downtown, uh, we actually got a few, uh, you know, a few people who stopped to buy who who wanted to know what what it was, you know, basically, which is interesting because it's so many people don't know anything about about this um, or about us. So um, I did find that doing rehearsals in these parking garage over the last year and a half. Now, do we get any members? We got a bunch of interested people who stuck it out for a little while. But when things go in and out, everybody's like, well, when this is all over, I'll come back. I was like, well, OK, <laughs> but um, yeah, we, we've had a little bit of success with that. But you guys had some success with that. We haven't tried it yet, actually. No. Oh, OK. I was wondering if you had somebody that was in charge of talking to people who are walking by if they expressed interest. We, we similar to Steve, we, we were in the parking lot for like a year. We didn't have an overhang, so I'm very jealous that you had that, Steve. Um, but what was interesting was we found that in, in the course of the day, there was actually a animal rescue uh, that was happening at the same time. So we had like half the parking lot blocked off with 50 cars. People would have to come and wait hours waiting for this truck to arrive from Tennessee with these adoptions that were going to happen. So people would pull in and park. So I would come up and tap on their window and say, hey, if you tune your radio into 95.3, you can hear this chorus rehearsal going on. And you saw their minds blown. We also had a medical ministry on the other side of the church. People would pick up stuff. So they were like, first of all, they were like, what is this bizarre thing with 50 cars with like tails sticking out of them going up to a soundboard? Uh, but it was a ton of fun. So we actually did pick up a couple members from that. Uh, and had a lot of fanfare. We actually had an opera singer was one of the ones that was getting a dog that day and worked cool. out pretty well. So you cool. never know. Gene, Gene, I'm coming to you in just a second, but uh, Dan, to your question, uh, the Guelph chapter that I, I'm still a member of, but I don't actively sing with, um, they, every summer they'll do, you know, maybe once a month, they'll go down to a local park and, uh, and do their rehearsal down there. It's nothing, you know, it's a little less uh, technical and they're mostly just sing through of the songs but it's not a show it's it's it really is just a, a sing out type of deal and i think they've had two uh stalwart members that came from that that exercise right that just saw um they had a partner they usually had you know partners of the guys in the chorus handing out brochures um and again you want to find the right people but that's what got it out gene uh, I got a story about walking by or singing outside. Uh, I'm singing with Harmonic Collective in Seneca Land, and um, we're a really young chorus. Uh, we started out as a, a youth chorus, and now we've gotten a mixed mixed chorus. So uh, we sing in a, in a hall, and it was a hot day outside and in the summer, and we had doors open to the hall, and we're singing and rehearsing, and a guy walks in the door. So we picked up a really good bass just by us singing out the doors. Opening the doors. And, uh, yeah, cool. Cool. And, and so awesome. he's, he's, so it does work if you're singing outdoors. Cool. No, that's awesome. All right. Uh, let's keep charging ahead. Yeah, that's just screening guests. How do they hear you? Uh, what is, I'll also ask him what that first night experience is like. So like, is that enough to get them to come back? Is that, did do they know what you're talking about is someone talking about overtones and i don't even know what the heck that is and you just asked me to stand over here and suggested i might be a baritone but i don't i don't know what this guy next to me is singing at all right so um what does that first night seem like okay internal public relations and this goes back to kind of what i was saying where you got to get your own members psyched about the type of stuff you're doing so be a good listener um these these are talked a bit more about in the guide as well but um just being a good listener making sure that you're asking people what they're doing and and uh, and and make sure that you're doing the right types of things to find the people that you already have in the door right uh, sharing information, making sure they know where you're advertising. You know, hey, we're on the radio this week. So if you someone's asking about that or tune into this, your own guys should know about that. Your own uh, your own members. Uh, collaborating, you could collaborate with with people in your uh, 
your group who might have workplaces or things like that, that, uh, that might be a good performance opportunity. Um, and then just learning and repeat, you know, it's, it's kind of that lather, rinse, repeat, but making sure that you're really uh, keyed into what your members are telling you. Okay. Um, and then there's some other stuff in the guide. There's a nine stage action plan for marketing. There's tips for good media relations. There's the four C's of promotion and, and 10 low budget promotional tips and press releases, best practices and samples. So all this stuff is in the guide. It's a, I think a 33 page um, PDF uh, and I'll make sure it goes out. But I really encourage you to just look through it. There's something for every chorus. There's something for a chorus of every size. Um, was anyone familiar with this resource before hopping on tonight? Cool, uh, Steve, yes. I think we did a really good session on it too. Um, no, I'm, that's, that's good too. I'm glad this is not uh, rehashing a lot of material for people. But yeah, I, I would really encourage you. It's, it's one of the best um, really practical resources that, uh, that I've seen for a lot of groups. And before I wrap up here, I would say, Another resource, if you're uh, the marketing person for your group, uh, there's also a Facebook group, Barbershop Chorus Marketing Mastermind. Hop on that and uh, you might get some ideas or be able to contribute and help other people with ideas, but it's all marketing barbershop choruses. It's people who are in the same scenario. So uh, I found it very helpful. Hey, I said I was gonna be done at 8 p.m. And look at that, it's 8 p.m. on my watch. Uh, so get in touch. Uh, my email is up there. It's just michael at michael-black.com. And if you have any questions about any stuff I talked about tonight or anything like that, uh, but let's let's keep it going. I'm not going anywhere. So uh, if you've got ideas or or things you want to chat about or questions, you know, now's the time. I wanted to share a recent nugget that I found. Um, so leveraging your nonprofit status, if you have maintained it, uh, Canva, as I mentioned earlier, is one of my absolute favorite things on the planet anymore. Canva.com, it's super easy to do marketing materials. So whether it's logos or business cards or whatever, to get like to the good stuff, it's like 10 bucks a month or something like that, that I was just shilling out of pocket. And I'm like, you know what, let me see if they have a nonprofit rate. So I sent them a note. I got 10 free pro accounts because we're a nonprofit. So I was able to set up a whole bunch of people in our chapter who use it for various things to get a free account. So that saved a just boatload of money. So I found that definitely leveraging that nonprofit status has paid off numerous times for us. Cool. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Don't, don't be shy about it. Like always ask, even if it's just saving sales tax, if you're tax exempt, just always go for it. David, before we just go, uh, into a break. Was there anything official you wanted to do to kind of wrap up or things people need to take away or anything like that? Nothing in particular other than uh, we will be, this session was recorded. Uh, there's a lot of post-production <laughs> things that need to get done. Uh, plus my wife and I are going out to midwinter uh, next week. So probably the week after I'll be sending out the link the YouTube link for this session to everyone who is enrolled and everyone who showed up, who showed up. And I'll also be sending out tonight or tomorrow a brief five question survey uh, about this class. I which I wish everyone would participate in that. And uh, it, the window on that will close probably uh, next Friday. And then, um, We'll collect the results and we'll use that in planning for our next Leadership Academy. And I'll send the results along to Michael as well. But other than that, there's nothing official. Uh, Thanks, David. Uh, Steve. Um, I, Steve. Oh, I, just before Steve oh. jumps in, I, I did paste the link to the, the guide. Um, I know you're going to send out the slides and stuff like that. It'll be somewhere. But just if you want it right now, um, I put it a Dropbox okay. link in the, in the chat. Yep. And I'll be sending out, uh, uh, Michael will send his uh, presentation, his slide presentation to me, and I will in, uh, be sending that out to all of the enrollees in this class. Steve Solomon. Yeah, I would, just, I would be remiss if I didn't remind everybody, those of you who don't know me, that I am the district rep for marketing. So you can contact me anytime. And I put my email address into the chat. 
Um, but I'm happy to just feel whatever ideas or challenges that you might have, um, what's going on in your chapter, you need to get over a small hurdle, happy to help anytime. Contact me. Perfect. Thanks, Steve. Uh, I see Becky, hand up. And marketing stuff, and maybe this is the music vice president coming out right now, but please remember that quality of music is a big piece to membership and to marketing, because if you have are not putting out your A game, people will come, but they will not stay. Um, a choir that I sing with, we just surveyed all of our members. What brought you to this group? And out of 24, six of them went to a concert and were so blown away by the sound that they had to be a part of the ensemble, myself included. So I think when we are having discussions about you know, how can we retain members? How can we get more members? How can we market well? I think a lot of that discussion also has to, you know, you have to ask yourself, what kind of sound are we producing and how can we constantly be improving? That's great. That's, that's a really good point. And that, and that is not to say that, you know, you need to do tougher stuff, right? That's not to say, um, it, it's a lot of it comes down to doing maybe accessible stuff. Um, things that might challenge your members, but are also kind of within the wheelhouse and, and uh, approachable and, and uh, familiar stuff, right? For your, for your audiences. Um, I love a lot of great barbershop ballads, but, you know, if they're not performed by, if, if they're beyond the, the scope of the group that's performing them and I've never heard it before in my life, yeah, it's just not going to do it for me, right? So finding that, that sweet spot is really, really key. Yeah, there's so Good many point. other things competing for the for leisure time activity. And it's, you've got to have a good product out there. Otherwise, people aren't going to pay attention because they know good music. And if they don't hear it, they move on. Michael, uh, you were talking about having really good, sharp uh, images and good quality. Uh, a lot of us uh, in the barbershop world are of a certain age. Do you got any magic about how to make it look better? <laughs> <laughs> well, you could do a whole heck of a lot with photos, Gerald. Look, look like cream. you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I would say that there's lots of like, even your iPhone, uh, if someone's got an iPhone or something, there's really, really good filters on them that uh, that'll make you look like you're having fun. No, I'm just kidding. No. Uh, <laughs> that that can make it. you know even a, a just a casual snap um, look really good. So it's not uh, it's not a matter of like bringing in a professional necessarily, but someone who's got an eye for that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe you've got someone in your course who's just like. A hobby photographer or something. Um, often the the angle and the timing comes down to more than like the equipment, having super good equipment or things like that. So, I would say set it up. Definitely think about it before you actually hit the shutter button. So look at your background. Make sure it's not too busy with something else. Uh, get as many singers, whole shots, you know, whole heads with them actually singing. That actually works really, really well but you do have to set it up a little bit. Yeah, good question, Joe. And take way more pictures than you think you'll need. Right, that's what's then great you can about choose. digital. Make sure I guess one thing- that nice, nice clothes on, so you all that look too. the same, your, yep. your outfits, your yep. uniforms, your casuals, whatever. Clothes and, that fit. And let them know ahead of time and say, smile. <laughs> you <Wow>. know. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Hey, Becky, just to, to piggyback on what you just mentioned, um, it's also important that um, I call it over marketing. And that's kind of a weird term to bring up now because you're all just, you know, it's like sponges listening to all of this about marketing. But you ha have to have a good product. You have to sing well, put your best foot forward. But you also can't um, be in a position where you can't fulfill what you've actually advertised. So if you're gonna, if you've got someone really great in marketing 
and they're doing all this great stuff for your chapter or for you or whatever, and you show up and you don't sing well, or you don't have a nice formal manner, it can be just as bad for you as good. Um, and it's really tough if you take a step backwards in any of this stuff to come back and resurrect and try to get that step forward again, it's tough. So always put your best foot forward and your best face on. Steve, I can't tell you how many times I've come across a, a chapter or website that has like, what is barbershop? And they'll put a video up of some amazing quartet like uh, Shopkins Prime or something like that. And, or they'll have pictures of like all this really great, young, diverse looking bunch of people that they plucked off of, of the internet and you show up and it's, you know, it's, it's like just six dudes right. who are just barely singing. Yeah. Um, you really, the truth of marketing is, is key. I totally agree. Yep. Uh, kind of just building on that. One thing I, I would impress on everyone, if there's something you're going to do between now and, and 10 o'clock, take a look at your websites. Your websites are the portal to your soul and your musical world. Um, and if it's the, the better your website is, the more effective you're going to be it still holds true that the first thing anyone's going to do in connection with your group is check out your face or check out your website. So does it have, is it up to date with your rehearsals? Like we just switched to virtual this week. I've got to catch up. Our website doesn't say that. So I'm praying somebody doesn't show up at the church for rehearsal on Wednesday, for example. Um, so just making sure it's an accurate reflection and it's, it's up to date. Make sure you're like your, your most recent performance is in 2017, unless it really was. Um, you know, upcoming and also that upcoming events were also not 2017. So just take just take a look at it. And if what I've had to do in the past when I had to do an overhaul, we actually took it down for a minute until we could get it up and running again. Yeah, I can't tell you how many websites I've seen in the and not just this district, but across the country um, that have really old information. Uh, that is just it's the worst thing you can have up there is have anything that's more, you know, everyone's like, well, I haven't done anything since 2019. That's not an excuse to have a site that's not up to date. Um, you know, keep it up to date. And I'm actually happy to report that there are a lot of NED um, chapters who have recently uh, completely revamped and, and taken on um, a, a new website platform and have done their own, a really great job doing their own pages. So um, it's good to make sure you get those updated. Yeah, and if you don't have someone who can go on even, you know, that if it can only be updated once a year, maybe that's not where your show stuff lives or, you know, less than that. Um, you could just come up with content that's basically evergreen, right? And and you know, a link that says visit our Facebook for show information or, or something like that. If there's a yep. place that is updated, don't pretend like your website is going to be that place, right? Yep. Uh, I see, Becky, did you have another comment or... I see Gene's hand up. I still see your hand up, so I don't know. Uh, Gene, go ahead. Uh, to, to piggyback on what we were talking about with websites, um, I've had two occasions. I'm out in California right now visiting with my daughter. And last week I visited uh, um, one of the local chapters not far away from here. And I went on their their webpage and their, their location has changed, but they have not kept up. So here I am thinking I only have to make a 20 minute walk down the street. And now it's a Ooh. 20 minute drive. Yeah. And if it hadn't been for their membership people, luckily that part hadn't changed. So they got, they were able to get back in touch with me and say, Oh no, we're not there anymore. We got to go. Otherwise I'd have been there going to the same place and been very upset. And that's not a good thing for, for any chorus or any organization for that matter. But Gene, um, that's they, they, they just hadn't been able to pick up their keep theirs up to date either. And that's, Gene, that's, uh, that's a great point. And and I and David has done this too, it has helped me quite a bit, reminding our chapters that whatever changes you you have, you change you make sure the district knows as well as the society. Um, so we can update all of our stuff. And the other thing is to remember that if you've been meeting in the same in one place and then one week you change, even if it's just for one week or if it's permanent, put, make sure there's a notice posted at that old location. Mm. Um, I mean, you could do more harm than good again when you have bad information out there. So 
Um, well, there's good, also good a, a, a contributing negative factor to this, and that is uh, secretaries or whoever's responsibility it might be to update chapter information that's uh, outward facing. Uh, navigating member center uh, can be daunting and is terrifying to some people and they just don't bother because they just can't handle it. And we offer all kinds of help and there's all kinds of information available for navigating member center. Um, and you need to get at it through the document center, but uh, you need to, you really do need to keep the information correct. And May, one more thing. Um, I do know from our, our own chapter, uh, I think our web page actually needs to be changed a little bit. I got to talk to the webmaster. Uh, don't make your websites so busy that people can't get through them. It's, it becomes very difficult. And ours, ours was, um, ours responsibilities have been changing because of COVID and changes in the board and all this thing. So it's another thing to remember. Good. Well, I think we're at the, at our, our time. Uh, Michael, anything you want to add uh, to close up? Um, nothing extra. Um, David, I've sent you the, the slide deck and the guide and that link to Eventbrite. So if you get those distributed, then uh, I'll do that. Yeah, I think yeah. I think we're all good. Thanks everyone for joining uh, us here tonight. I think it's uh, super important to that you've stepped up for your chapter. So uh, thank you for your commitment and your service. And thank, thank you, you, Michael, for your time and your efforts and your passion. Uh, and uh, we're fortunate to find you. Uh, and thank everyone here for attending and being part of this event. Uh, be careful going home. It's uh, it could be a little slippery outside. So careful <laughs> on your drive home. Um, it's a jokester here. And, and if you happen to look up, uh, you can imagine that it's a bright, clear, a uh, cloudless night with a beautiful crescent moon, but that's uh, not here in New England anyway. So uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, enjoy your trip home and we'll see you around the campus. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great David, thank you for all your work this weekend. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Lots of fun. Thank you. I'm going to get out of my driveway. <laughs> Can't even walk out there. <laughs> Thank you. Here we go. Thank you again, Michael. Great job. Thank you so much.